and welcome to another vlog. So in this vlog, I am on the way down to a place called Norton Disney. Norton Disney is it's quite a new complex for around around this area. It's only about 35 minutes, 40 minutes away from from my house. As you've got quite a lot of day tickets around it now. Norton Disney, A1 Pit, sort of Trent View Fisheries. There's, there's, a, there's a lot of lot of fisheries around here within half an hour, 45 minute drive of my uh, my house. But well, we chose to go to Norton Disney for 24 hours. A friend of mine's down there, and I think he's managed to get on peg 20 on Billy's Lake. When I was looking on the maps last night, just as you first drive in for the main gates, that is on the right hand side as you're coming in. But we have 24 hours ahead of us. The weather is it's very wet. I'm not a fish myself, but I like catching them. So I've got a spare change of clothes. So two spare changes of clothes. Nice waterproof jacket. Hopefully we can get down there, get looking around and see if I can find anything to put a rig in front of and get me a nice fish here. And here we are, just coming through the gates at Norton Disney now. It is super, 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 super soggy. Yeah, just going through the gates of Norton Disney and it is very, very wet. I was looking at the air pressure last night and it's down to 980. Haven't seen it that low for a very long time. Looking, looking out on Billy's as I first come in. One, two, three, four, five. Is that my mate down there? Six. I can see six people so far. And I think I think this is the one we're off on to. Yeah, we're here and let's get stuck into it. And this is the peg I'm on, the peg 21. My friend is on the peg next door to me on peg 20. It is, to say it's a Wednesday midweek, it is, you know, it's very busy, but that's how, how the game is now. There's a lot of people who are into it. But I'm on peg 21. Usually I'll be getting my marker float out and finding some spots straight away to find a location to put, you know, put a bit of bait in and, and sit back and, and see what happens. Like 23, 24 sort of thing, rod lengths. So, I'll bear that in mind. Wrap the marker rod up to that distance and just keep plugging around until I find somewhere that's uniform and good for me to put a dinner plate, well not dinner plate, but six, seven spawns to start off with. So yeah, usually I would, I said, get stuck straight into it using the marker float, but I'm gonna get my bivvy set up first because it is soggy day, very, very soggy. Let's get doing that. Just wrapping this up to 24 rod lengths as a starting point. In these types of places, everything's very systematic and structured. So, going to the guidelines is the only way, otherwise, uh, you're going to be annoying people, and that's the last thing you want to be doing. But, yes, we'll wrap up and start at 24 and work our way back and try and find them spots that we want to be fishing on. Right, now we've got that wrapped up at 24. So a little flick out into the water. I've not fished that far the last two or three months because of where I've been, been fishing at. Let's give it a go. First little punch. Woo! Go on, kid. Tink, plop. Doosh, ah, shallow. Very shallow. Ding, dung, 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 dung. Quiet. Oh, well, it's a smooth bottom. Little bumps. That's going up a hump now, that is. Dun, 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 dun. So I've just flung this out there at 24 rod lengths, and what I do is let it hit the clip, dunk, hit the deck, unclip it, pull it back about half a rod length just to, so I know that the float is pulled right down to the eye of the swivel. So I'm getting a true reading from the bottom to the top, and I need my float to be pulled up against the lead that is on the bottom of the lake so I can let out a foot of line at a time to find out the depth out there. So one, two, taking into consideration the float, so you always start at two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ah, nine foot deep, that's not too bad there. So what I do now is I'll reel the float down to the eye of the swivel. Think, let out the half a rod length that I just pulled off when I first started, roughly. I'll clip it back up and then I'll cast out probably to the left again, two, three foot, just to see, to get a good, a good picture in my head of 
you know, how that spot is. So I'm casting six, seven foot left and right all along that area till I find the most consistent and same depth, uniform depth with the sediment that I want to be fishing on top of. Now I've found the depth that I want to be fishing on. So when I cast out about 24, 25 rod lengths, I'm landing in 13, 15, 16, 17 foot of water. It's a deep old hole and I'm coming up the shelf which comes up to about six, seven foot. And I found breadthways and lengthways towards me where it stays six, seven foot for the longest. So now what I'm gonna do, knowing where that distance and location is, um, I'm gonna try and find a smoother spot, a clearer spot with this lead to present the rigs on. And I'll be wrapping up to that distance. All right, I found, found my longest spot rod. So I'm gonna have two rods, cause I've only got 24 hours ahead of me. I'm gonna have two rods on that seven, eight foot depth one. Well, it's probably about eight, nine foot of depth, but it's got this glassy smooth pull back with my gripper lead that I wanna, wanna be fishing on top of. And I've checked the width of it as well. And you've probably got about seven, eight foot of that sort of sediment and terrain on the bottom that I wanna be fishing on. So I'm just gonna flick, I'm gonna have a third rod down, just down here, where the lead pulls back at the smoothest. Douche. See that? Just sliding. Slippy, slippy, slippy. That's perfect. And these are the rigs I'm using. So I'm having a hinge stiff with a yellow pop up with my two rodded spot. And for the second rod, I'm having a bottom bait presentation. So all I've done there is use a bit of braid to make the hair out of. And then 25 pound, boom, some fluorocarbon down to a barbless hook. So the braid. I've tied the loop, put the bait on, got the braid, tied it once or twice onto the eye of the hook, pulled it up to the distance that I want it from, from the hook, and then I've whittled, whittled down with the fluorocarbon down the shank of the hook, not this knot style, and just to trap it all in place and give it, give it a boom section. And then the rod to the left, that's only going eight rod lengths out, with just a couple of boilers scattered over the top of it. That's gonna be my presentation, it's a flat pair, Again, size four hook, barbless, with a bit of 30 pound braid. Nothing, you know, nothing new. Just all this, just the sort of rigs I use anywhere. Yeah, so these two are getting flicked out onto the baited area, which is at 22 and a half rod lengths with my rods. And I have my spawn at 23 rod lengths. So I spawned at 23 wraps. I'm dropping my rods, leaded rods, baited rods, out at 22 and a half. And these wafts keep buzzing around my head. Must have a sweet taste in my breath. But yeah, um, that's what's going out. Give it a go. Caught your cut. So yeah, the highest peak, you come down, as you go across, that lovely little drop just there. So I've got one rod that side of it, one rod that side of it, at 22 and a half rod lengths. And when I'm putting the sea fish lint lead out there, it's the sediment that I want to be fishing on top of. It's nice and smooth, sandy, good, good spot. So hopefully, we can get something going and then that other rod eight rod lengths towards sort of that bigger tree just over there i'm just going to throw a few a few boilers over the top of it so this is this is the mix i'm putting out there From, you only allow corn maize boilers and pellet on this place so i've got some boilers out two three nights ago out of the freezer and just soaked them in a few a few bits and then i've got some maize and a couple of pellets in there Mainly boily and maize the mix, but that's what we'll be putting out there. Let's see if we can lure some of these things in. Just got a little bucket here, scoop some of the stuff up, put it in your spawn, close your spawn, shake it to the front. Stand in the same spot. I've got a bit of a crosswind going on here, coming from my left, coming from my right, sorry, I'm going down to my left. So I'm going to have to aim a little bit more right to counteract the wind and be able to land onto the spot that I found out there. This is wrapped up at 23 rod lengths. Been a while since I spotted, to be fair. Tink! Ah, oh, perfect. Yeah, that's the spot I'm aiming at to 23 wraps with the spot rod, 22 and a half with the rigs. I'm having to hit it quite hard just to ting, get that line stretched out so I know everything. Just landing to the spot. Hey, little dude. 
just washing my hands and they come right up next to me they scared the Jesus out of me what are you doing around there? come over here again mate oh, fine. that is the rods out in position waiting for something to come along you know on these types of waters you, you can't help yourself but think there's a lot of fish in here I've got 24 hours I paid a lot of money just for 24 hours I want to make the most of it but uh, yeah i'll sit back i'll wait i'll wait for the bait to do its thing and hopefully lure something in and i've just got that one down on the margin but while i'm doing that i'd like to speak to you guys about the braids that i use for my marker finding from a spot in and if the rules and circumstances allow on the lake from a long distance fishing as well i use the same braid for all three of them areas of carp fishing so for my leaders i have here 300 meters of braid, 50 pound braid, that cost me about 15 pound off the internet. And then for the main bulk, for my main bulk line and the lower diameter line so I can get the distance that I want to with ease, instead of having thick braid all the way straight through, is 20 pound spectra. This is 20 pound spectra, a thousand meters you get on this spool. And you know, for the for the fraction of the price of, of the items from companies that I used to use, this does the exact same job. I, you know, up to 30, 35 rod lengths I can get out happily with, 40 rod lengths with a lead, quite happily, the right conditions and the right gear. I don't really have many crackles with it. The quality lasts just as long as when I'm using one of the products from one of the more established companies in the carp fishing game. So yeah, on an overall, for a cheaper option, and always having big bulks of braid in your tackle box so you can use whenever because you know we all have crack offs every now and then you leave 100 meters worth of line out in the lake and it, you have to retrieve it back or someone else retrieves it back but yeah this is just a cheaper option for bulking up your reels with i just thought i'd share that one with you guys hopefully oh what's my mate up to is he alive is he into one you go on jack Oh, is it? <laughs> well, yeah, that's that's a cheaper option. So hopefully, yeah, that's a little tip from me to use that might help you with your fishing and your bank account. My mates just brought me this round, a Norton burger. So you get a nice, decent sized burger. With some good veggies in there. And some nice chippies. You would like one, wouldn't you, girl? Yeah, yeah. No? No, you fussy. Ooh. Never known a dog be fussy. But yeah, some good scran here as well. And the weather, beautiful, it's just coming again. Constantly raining on me. I must have done something when I was 17. Sort of take or what, but this thing just draw right off. Solid bag I've just pinged out. And we're on. <laughs> Just seen a few fish showing beyond the spot. About 10 yards, 20 yards beyond the spot. Just for a chubby like 10 yards beyond. Now there's people pulled off in front. This guy's gone. Yeah. 
Yeah, pitchy, pitchy, pitchy. Yeah. Nice one, Bruce. That oh, yeah. isn't bad then. First one for the session. To be fair, yes, yesterday afternoon, and last night was a bit grim, it did not stop raining. But this morning, I woke up, I've seen fish showing long, like a bit further. I've just probably gone about another 10 yards over the spot with a solid bag. And this guy's uh, paid me a visit. Yeah, about 12, 12, 13 pound. Yeah, groovy little mirror carp. Saves a blank. To be fair, I, I do like it down here. Do you know what I mean? These pegs are, it's comfortable, it's accommodating. Yeah, first one. That was the first and final fish of that session. It was only a 20, little 24 hour. And when I first got there, I just found some spots, put a little bit of bait out, an investment into the pond, hoping to get a good reward from it. But, Looking around me at other people and looking at the circumstances between me and my mate, what was going on with us, the fish, they weren't really eating a lot and they weren't coming to much bait. So this morning I pulled off the bait and I put two two, rug, two solid bags just a bit further than the spot and I ended up with that, that smaller one. And then as the morning progressed on, I could still see fish showing out of the area where I put the solid bags but nothing else happened. And then this fish started showing a bit closer in on the back end of the wind just as I was leaving. but. I've got to go home and I've got work tomorrow, so yeah, I can't stop another night. If I could stop another night, I know I would have less bait, stuck to solid bags and gone into different different locations where the fish were behaving. But Norton Disney on the whole, I like it down there. It's well set out, there's a good, good bit of thought going behind it. You know, it's a nice, nice place to be. In a couple of years time, I'm sure I'll be visiting that place a lot more. But thank you for watching and I will see you when I'm next out. Get my mask float out and find some spots for it. Now we've got that round number 24. A little flick out. Even, you know, we're just, we're just using, so I'm having a pinch here.